Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. In today's video we're going to be investigating the perfect gravity turn in Kerbal Space Program version 1.02. There actually has been some discussion about what is the perfect uh, angle of ascent when taking off from Kerbin in the new uh, 1.0 release of Kerbal Space Program. And a lot of people are actually, we can really agree on whether it's better to actually, you know, do like what we used to do and go straight up first until 10 kilometers and then start turning slowly until you actually reach um, zero degrees turn and then basically blast your engines laterally until you reach orbit or is it better to do something completely different so today we're going to investigate this mathematically and try to find the perfect ascent uh, angle and also perfect ascent pattern uh, using only one mod really Mac jab and also I'm gonna use Kerbal Space Engineer just so we can see how much Delta V we have left and we can compare it to other ascents that we're going to investigate and without further ado, here's our investigatory craft. Let's name it Foglore 1 because it's so ugly. So this is Foglore 1 and it is all I need to investigate this type of pattern. Now, the reason why I chose orange tank here and not a uh, thinner tank uh, that would um, basically fit this design really well is this. Let me show you what happens if you have a rocket that is too tall. This is actually a feature or I guess sort of, uh, I wouldn't call it a bug, but uh, a negative feature of version uh, 1.0. So if I were to use a thin and long rocket, this is what would happen. It would start flipping. Now, this is actually really interesting. It's mostly because what happens here is, let me just pause this for a second. What happens here is, uh, as soon as you turn your rocket just a little bit, suddenly the air pressure on the tip starts flipping it so much that it cannot be controlled anymore. So you actually have to start using thicker rockets or rockets that are a little bit more robust in terms of uh, not being so thin. So even with uh, little flaps here with the uh, winglets and controllers, it's really hard to control thin rockets. It's actually, it's a sort of a new atmospheric feature that is, uh, I think is a little bit more realistic. You actually have to have a lot more controllers on your craft in order for you to be successful at launching thin rockets. So instead we're going to be using a thick fat rocket that controls much better. Which is why we have Foglore 1. So this rocket is very, very stable. It's very thick. It does not get the same type of effect on uh, from the air. Basically, even even if it turns, the air pressure will will obviously push on this part right here, but it will not be enough for, for it to be flipped because it does have controllers and overall mass that is um, enough to kind of counter counteract that type of force. So this is why I'm using the fat rocket. So anyway, so this has total delta V of about approximately 4,900 uh, meters per second which is more than enough to get into orbit. And here what we're going to be testing is different angles of ascent. So I have my space engineer right here and I have my mech jab right here. The one reason I'm using mech jab is because it will make more my ascents a lot more consistent so that we can kind of cancel out the human error in there and we'll, it will make it uh, a little bit easier to control the ascent. And of course we had to bring Valentina Kerman. No one else but Valentina Kerman. She is the awesome, oh. Oh no, what happened? <laughs> Something just happened. She is the awesome female Kerbal space program engineer person, or she, I think she's actually a pilot, and she absolutely has to be the new Jebediah Kerman. She's going to be going on every mission, and I'm sorry Jebediah Kerman, but your time is over. I am going to only use Valentina now. Anyway, so let's board the ship. And so, okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep uh, the Delta V up, so this part right here, currently we have 4320 um, Delta V, this is mostly because it's atmospheric reading, not the uh, space reading, not the uh, va vacuum reading, so it's actually 4900. Now it's here, I'm going to choose Ascent Guidance, and in Ascent Guidance we're going to uh, edit our ascent path. So let's start with something that someone suggested. So they were saying, well, listen, because my rocket, my thin rocket is so unstable now, I'm going to go direct straight, um, straight up, directly up. And then at around like 60 kilometers, we're going to make a turn and start blasting our engine sideways until we reach uh, orbital speed. So let's try that. So we're going to change this to approximately, let's just say 60, 60 kilometers. So at 60 kilometers, we're going to execute a turning maneuver. So how sharp does it have to be? Well, Let's make it pretty sharp. 
All right, well, this looks pretty good. So this uh, this looks pretty good. So at around 60 kilometers, we're going to start turning and going sideways. So let's see how much delta V we have left. We're obviously going to be able to reach the orbit. Now, the question is how much delta V is left. So uh, we're going to remove terminal velocity limit, limit because for some reason, this current way is bugged out in, um, in this particular version of the game. So don't use this if you're using MacJab. And everything else will be the same. Corrective steering, yes. Auto staging, which is really only one stage. This is actually an SSTO technically. Auto warping and everything else. All right, engage autopilot and go. Uh, we can turn this off for now and we can turn this off for now. So basically this is it. So it's going to turn a little bit. It always happens mostly because of the air pressure. Look at how beautiful the game is now. So much more priority. And so yeah, let's wait for it to ascend. Um, I'm you're gonna have to rely on my honesty here. I'm not gonna change anything. I'm going to be basically be only skipping the parts that are kind of boring, the ascent paths, and giving you the final results here. So we're really only looking at this part, delta v left. So um, from my previous attempts, I was able to get about thousand delta v left. So let's see how much we get now. Valentina Kerman is ridiculously happy. Actually, I, wanna, I haven't seen a new IVA now yet. Oh, they've changed it. Which they've changed everything actually. IV looks quite good as well. You can sort of see her cute little arms right there. Uh, all right, so let's get back to the ascent. So, um, yeah. So let's wait for this. Okay, so the engines have been stopped. We've, we're still going directly up. We're not actually. We don't have any lateral velocity whatsoever. So this is what some people suggested. You know, go directly up. You won't be flipping your rocket. And it seems to work for me. Someone said. Uh, and let's see how much delta V is left after we execute this maneuver. So, right about now. There you go. The rocket is going to start turning. I'm not doing anything. This is all mech jab. And it's going to start blasting the engine's side, no, laterally is the word. We have to get 2,120 meters per second laterally. And I think we overshot just a little bit, so uh, we're going to wait for a little bit of a descent here. So you, you can already imagine we kind of wasted some fuel there because we overshot. Um, but yeah, so we're basically just going straight up and then straight right. So almost like a 90 degree angle, but not really. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit less than 90 degrees. If you look at this here, this is the actual pathway. So it's sort of yeah, this way. And so yeah, I mean it does work, and it is very stable. Your rocket won't wobble at all because here at this altitude there's almost no atmosphere, so there's really nothing to worry about. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I'm actually aiming for orbital altitude of 80 kilometers. So this is low um, orbit around Kerbin just above the atmospheric limit of 70 kilometers and usually that's enough for like you know if you're trying to transfer it to another planet if you're trying to transfer to the moon uh, this is usually enough so all right almost there and orbit okay we have 697 let's say 700 meters per second left so 700 delta v left after uh straight up right way right ways uh ascent okay let's try another one and this time we're gonna change it. Let's actually change it to, let's just say 20 kilometers. And then the pathway is going to be maybe a little bit less dramatic. So kind of like this. Uh, yeah, okay, 35 degrees, 35%, whatever it's called. So just like this. So uh, we're gonna ascend to 20 kilometers and then gently move, I guess more sharply, but still kind of gently moved into a, a type of a, uh, I guess you could call it exponential function uh, uh, orbit, not orbit, but uh, pathway. All right, so let's do this and go. And what I've actually noticed, uh, one of the main changes in the game right now is that the terminal velocity at lower altitudes has, has increased dramatically. If you look at the atmospheric efficiency right here, we are actually at only at 50% efficiency at a very low altitude, meaning that at 5,000 meters, the, your maximum speed is something like 400 meters per second, if not more. Uh, so they actually have dramatically changed the uh, the way atmosphere behaves in this game. So it used to be called Supersphere, and I actually liked Supersphere because it was kind of fun. But now it's sort of like more realistic in a sense, and not as fun as the Supersphere. Anywho, so we're about to start our turn in a few seconds. We're still going really, really fast directly up. And just in a few seconds here, right about 
No. It's gonna start turning. There you go. MacJab is so smart. Whoever invented MacJab is genius. And alright, there we go. So this is the uh, the turn uh, gravity turn. So let's see how much delta v we have left after this. So right now we're going we're already gaining quite a lot, quite a dramatic amount of uh, lateral velocity, and we're gonna gain even more as we progress through this particular ascent. So this is basically we're kind of like over here right now, and you can see engine is stopping mostly because we're going too fast, too high up. So we, uh, the engine stopped because we were gaining too much vertical velocity. Uh, now, if you actually want to see or if you want to read more about Gravity Turn and why it's actually important to execute it, um, there's a really awesome wiki um, link. I'm, well, not awesome, but it's basically a wiki link I'm posting in the description for this video. Check it out. It's basically, it kind of explains to you the vectors involved and why Gravity Turn actually saves you fuel in the long term. Um, so it is kind of important to, to start a Gravity Turn. Um, and this is a bit of a spoiler, but as soon as possible, actually. And uh, but yeah, gravity turns are very, very important for any kind of a takeoff from any planet, including Moon. Even if you're taking off from Moon, you you want to start a gravity turn ASAP. And look at that, 900 meters per second. We've already saved 200 meters per second delta V. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, it counts, it counts, it counts for something. So definitely more efficient. So all right, so let's try this again and lower this to 10 kilometers like we used to do in Kerbal Beta or before that. And I'm really going to refer to this as a kind of a super, super spheric launch because this is uh, what we used to use in Super Sphere. 10 kilometer, and this is actually what Scott Manley recommended as well. 10 kilometer gravity turn, uh, a little bit more gentle than this. All right, there we go, 70% 70, 70 turn shape. Uh, at 10 kilometers. All right, so let's see how this does. So last time we got 900 left, first time we got 700, and what will happen now? And here come the few last seconds of the orbital burn. We're about to find out how much delta V we have left. And three, two, one, and looks like we have a little bit more, just a little bit more. It's about to finish, and we are at 999 meters per second, so almost 100 meters per second extra. That is from the regular orbital, sorry, gravity turn that we used to execute in the beta and before that. So, all right, so let's actually look at something else. Now, the default setting here, when I actually installed MacJab in the new version, was seven kilometers. Now, this is mostly because the atmospheric values have changed dramatically, so this might be a little bit more efficient. Now, let's actually also change the uh, orbital path a little bit to make it uh, to make the MacJab start lateral velocity acceleration a little bit sooner. So I'm gonna change it to about 45 degrees actually. So let's try this again and let's see what happens now. So it, it seems that the, the sooner you start the gravity turn, the better. It seems like we're saving fuel every time we start the gravity turn earlier. So this is going to be attempt number four, seven kilometers um, with a 45% or 45% uh, turn shape or also known as a kind of a gentle turn shape, a little bit gentler than before. And here comes the last part of the orbital burn, and let's find out how much delta V we have left after the default setting in MacJab. So this was starting uh, with the seven kilometer gravity turn at a slightly more gentle 45% uh, turn. So, and the answer is 1138 meters per second. So almost 15, no, almost 150 meters uh, delta V uh, extra. So obviously a little bit more efficient. Okay, so I guess you see where I'm going with this. Let's try the last one. This is going to be the last attempt. Now, this attempt is going to be based on real life. This is actually based on the video I've recently watched from a SpaceX um, rocket launch where they actually start their gravity turn after about, you know, a few seconds, like 20 seconds or so. So we're gonna decrease this to the lowest possible value, which in this game is 350 meters. So we're gonna start our gravity turn as soon as possible. Uh, and we're going to change the shape to possibly maybe something like this, 45% again. Although I want to actually play around with this. I may actually do this a few more times just to see if it's better to do it this way or this way. Uh, or I guess this this way would be uh, what I'm talking about. So, all right, so let's start with 45%. So this, theoretically, is going to give me the highest fuel saving possible. So as soon as you launch your spaceship, start a gravity turn very, very gently, 
and let's see what this does for us. So same thing, same settings, everything else is the same. The only thing is dif that's different is the starting altitude for a gravity turn. And here we go. So at 350 meters, which is a few seconds after the liftoff, we're going to begin our gravity turn, which is really kind of what NASA, and specifically SpaceX, does all the time. So right now, there we go, the gravity turn has started, the rocket is already turning, and this technically should save us the most fuel. So let's see if this actually works. And you can kind of see it's sort of gently turning sideways, very, very gently reaching this particular shape that is uh, sort of exponential in its, in, its, uh, in its appearance. So here we go, let's find out how effective this is. And three more seconds left before we find out how effective this is, and three, two, one, and look at that. Yes, it is more effective. We have 1,275 meters per second delta V left, 1,276 to be exact, which is uh, about 100 meters per second more than the previous attempt, or about 576 meters per second delta V uh, from the original shape that was basically straight up, straight right. Now for my next investigation, we're going to play around with the turn shape. So is it better to do it this way or essentially start going uh, straight up and then do like a more sharp turn somewhere at a higher altitude, which I think is not very efficient, or is it better to do a uh, turn first and then essentially reach an altitude with a sharp turn initially? So I personally think that, um, well, this was 45%. I think maybe this is actually more effective, but let's find out if it is. So this is this value right here, and this is something you should remember, 1276 meters per second left. So let's find out if we can actually beat that. And my extra attempt number one, I decided to increase the turn shape to 64%, and as you can see, the delta V has decreased, so from 1276 back to 1165. So that is not a very good shape. Let's try this again and decrease it instead to, let's just say, let's make it about 24 or 25, let's make it 25% this time. So, so far 45% was the most effective. Let's try 25. And actually with such a sharp turn, a lot of my parts got overheated. You can actually see there's some heat damage here because um, the uh, we got we got a really high velocity in the lower atmosphere, so a lot of these parts got really super hot. I actually thought they're going to explode, but they didn't. So let's see what the what the final result is going to be. So far, it actually, is looking pretty good. And the final result is 1150 left. So that's still lower than 1276 we had our in our 40% turn shape uh, or 45% turn shape. So yeah, either going this way or this way is a little bit less efficient. So it looks like somewhere in the vicinity of 40 to 45 is where you actually want to be aiming uh, when taking off from Kerbin. Now, this obviously depends on one thing. It actually depends on how powerful your rockets are. So specifically, on, it depends on TWR. My TWR for this particular ro rocket is, is 1.44 at the surface. So uh, if your rocket is more powerful, you actually may want to change this to uh, slightly this type of a pathway. If it's less powerful, you may want to actually change it to something like this. Uh, so let's try this again. I want to see what is the number I'm actually looking at. So I'm going to try to beat 1276, see if I can. I'm going to try this just as it touches the, here we go, 50%, let's try 50%. Oh, that was very close. All right, it's at 12.57 now, about 20 meters per second less than before. But yeah, basically anywhere between 50 and I guess 40 is what you're aiming for. So if you're uh, if you're having trouble taking off with the rocket from Kerbin, um, first of all, make sure that it's thick enough and fat enough. So don't build long, thin rockets because they will be unstable. And secondly, uh, start your turn as soon as possible. Uh, if you're using mag jab, set it to 350 meters and then anywhere between 40% and 50% turn shape because this will give you the most effective ascent with the most uh, fuel savings possible. So this is basically, I think this is actually, that was my mission. I finally found the ascent that was, that was absolutely perfect so that I can actually save the most fuel. And just to summarize, let's do this again. I'm actually gonna change this to 43% because I think it will give me slightly higher value. And I'm going to show you the path that you should be taking, especially if you like to do this manually, just like I do. I normally don't use MacJab for anything. I do prefer to do this manually. So 
uh, let's look at the pathway that you should be taking when taking off with any rocket from Kerbal Space Center. So start your takeoff and essentially um, almost right away start turning very 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 gently uh, towards uh, 90 degree angle which is east right here so turn very gently here you can see uh, the Mac Jab already doing it for me so it's already taking a kind of a um, uh, exponential sort of a, or hyperbolic shape here and um, you do this very very slowly so that at an altitude of approximately 15 kilometers you have um, an angle of 45 degrees so very very gently maybe something like a few degrees per second and um, try not to over push it too much because you're going to be losing delta V then and uh, if you are using mag job basically set it to 43% maybe 45 maybe 40% and the lowest possible altitude because this will give you the highest savings so here uh, we're slowly turning. Um, MacJab is really, really good at doing this really super gently. You can see it's slowly turning sideways, and just uh, um, as we gain altitude. So right here at about 15, maybe 16 kilometers, you should be at 45 degree angle, and still gently uh, leveling out to zero degrees. Um, then this, at this point you may actually start may want to start looking at your apoapsis because you don't want this to go too high up so try to um, aim for the altitude that you're aiming for so for example right now I'm aiming for 80 kilometers so uh, we're going to stop our ranges at 80 kilometers when apoapsis reaches 80 kilometers or maybe even just a little bit below that and here we're already almost at zero degrees it's approximately 15 degrees right now decreasing to 10 degrees Altitude is already 35 kilometers, and uh, apoapsis is 80 right here. So there we go. So stop the engines now, and there's wait wait for your ship to get to that point. And then at this point right here, you will want to blast your engines completely laterally, um, just so that you can actually um, circularize your orbit. Blast your engines laterally, just toward the horizon, basically completely laterally. Um, until you circularize your orbit completely. So right here, you want this to be completely circular. Uh, specifically, you want your apoapsis to be right here and perapsis to be right here. So there we go. Almost there. Almost there. Very, very close. I think that's it. Oh, and look at that. We actually managed to save two delta V, two meters per second delta V. So 43% was a little bit more efficient than both 45% and 40%, just as I thought. And essentially, this is how you do takeoffs in Kerbal Space Program version 1.0 or 1.02. Um, it's a little bit more difficult than before, and I absolutely love it because the atmosphere now is so much better. This is Valentina Kerman. She's very happy about the success of this mission. And this has been What the Math with the investigation of various ascents in this version of Kerbal Space Program. Now, this may actually change if they change the atmosphere or if they actually... Uh, patch this up a little bit, especially if the whole um, wobbly thin rocket is actually a bug and not a feature. Um, so this means that atmosphere might still change, but right now it works perfectly, so just start your gravity turn as soon as possible and do it very, very gently. Anywho, thank you for watching, please subscribe and give me a later, guys. Good luck to you and bye-bye.